You know, I've heard of this movie, but it took me a while to finally sit down and watch it. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> I, I got a hot take for you guys. The room is good. I don't know what you're talking about. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your Everyday Nerd, the show where we unironically like Superman 64 and apparently now we like The Room too. I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and today's Feels Bad Friday. Happy Friday. On Fridays, we take a look at the cream of the crop. If that crop is, you know, packed inside of a trash can. Now, I've known for quite a while that Tommy Wiseau's The Room is supposedly the worst movie ever made. But... I gotta tell you, I think that The Room isn't what it quite appears to be. Instead, I would argue that The Room is the best dark comedy ever. In 2003, independent American filmmaker Tommy Wiseau wrote, produced, directed, and starred in The Room, a romantic drama that centers around a melodramatic love triangle between a banker named Johnny, played by Wiseau, his deceptive fiance Lisa, and his conflicted best friend Mark. And yes, I did just summarize the first paragraph off of Wikipedia. Sue me, okay? Hi, babe. I have something for you. What is it? Just a little something. <laughs> Johnny, it's beautiful. Thank you. While many movies that are deemed bad are oftentimes forgotten about, The Room ended up being an anomaly. Many publications have considered The Room to be the worst movie ever made, calling it the Citizen Kane of bad movies. And frankly, I've heard many times in just conversations with friends that The Room is bad and you should not watch it. So as I do, I like to judge things for myself. Whether it's bad, good, or mediocre, I like to go into anything with an open mind. Unfortunately, I was not prepared <laughs> for what came. What I expected was bad cinematography, bad acting performances, awful editing, and a plot that just wouldn't make any sense whatsoever. I mean, I've seen some bad movies in my day, and that's what those movies comprise of. Instead, what I got was 99 minutes of the funniest I've ever seen. The cinematography was surprisingly competent, if not good. The editing was simple, yet very serviceable. The acting was melodramatic, but paired with the line delivery and the plot, it worked for what I think it was trying to accomplish. See, a lot of people will write off the room as bad, mainly because of the acting and some of the weird creative choices that we'll talk about later. But what I found interesting was that Tommy Wiseau, the creator of The Room, has claimed that The Room is a dark comedy. A dark comedy or black comedy is described as a comic style that makes light of subject matter that is generally considered taboo. Comedians often use it as a tool for exploring vulgar issues, thus provoking discomfort and serious thought as well as amusement in their audience. And again, while most people claim that The Room is just a bad movie, I actually agree with Tommy Wiseau here. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. I think that The Room is not only a dark comedy, but a good one at that. Let's talk about the plot. Dark comedy is designed to discuss taboo topics. In this instance, The Room's plot can be considered quite a taboo topic. Our main character, Johnny, is a hardworking man who loves his fiance, Lisa, and wants nothing but the best for her. However, Lisa has decided that she no longer loves Johnny and she wants to break up with him. So Lisa tells her mother her newfound feelings, and her mother declares that she should still marry Johnny because he is well off financially. As the story continues, we also see that Lisa has fallen in love with Johnny's best friend, Mark. Throughout the story, there's also a kid named Denny, who is a college student that Johnny has been financially and emotionally supporting. He doesn't have a family outside of Johnny, and we also see that Denny has a run-in with an armed drug dealer who almost kills him. At the end of the movie, after Johnny has found out that Lisa has cheated on him, he breaks down and commits suicide. We then see the rest of the cast find Johnny's dead body, which makes them have to deal with the repercussions of their actions. If anything, the story to the room is dark. We see deceit and trickery from Lisa. We see the breakdown of a man who just lost the love of his life to his best friend, all of which drives him to ending his own life. We see a mother who discourages her daughter not to marry for love, but to marry for money. 
and we see a teenager who grew up without a family and engages in illegal behavior. This is a tragedy, and tragedies have no happy ending. So then you might be asking, if this is a dark movie, where's the comedy aspect of the dark comedy? Well, <laughs> how about the rest of the movie? The room is filled with comedic moments. Now, whether they're intentionally funny or not is up for interpretation, but I believe in my head that Tommy Wiseau is a comedic genius and there's actually a method to his madness. See, I don't think this is just a dark comedy. I think that this actually might be a parody of dramas and soap operas. We know that we have this super serious story going on and yet nobody actually takes it seriously. Multiple times in the movie, there are these bedroom scenes and instead of instrumental music in the background, like most movies would do, we have this cheesy R&B music. These scenes are not here to make you hot and sweaty. These scenes are here to make you laugh. The line delivery from most of the actors, especially Tommy Wiseau, is the first reason why people would say that The Room is an awful movie. And yet, I believe that these lines were delivered intentionally to make you laugh. Think of other over-the-top actors like William Shatner, who plays Captain Kirk in the original Star Trek. He's over top with the delivery, but that's part of his character personality. When Johnny, Tommy Wiseau's character, says, I did not hit her, I did not, oh hi Mark, our first inclination is to laugh. Whether you believe it or not, this line could have been delivered far worse. And it's the immediate snap from pissed off, I did not hit her, to the genuine oh hi Mark, which is so hilarious. Now many people will argue that's why this movie is so awful. But here's the interesting thing about Tommy Wiseau. He reshot scenes over and over and over again. Some people believe that Wiseau has some screws loose, but I'd argue the complete opposite. If his acting skills were bad, the amount of reshoots that he did, he would at some point start delivering lines more naturally. They would be second nature, and he wouldn't have to worry about the delivery of his lines because they would be like talking to someone else in real life. And yet, many times throughout the movie, no matter how many reshoots were made of each scene, he still delivers these lines in a very distinct way, and I believe it's because of comedic intent. I also think it adds an extra layer of psychology to Johnny's character. This is a man that killed himself after his fiance left him for his best friend. Now, this is a very messed up situation, but Johnny still had a job, a very well-paying one. Johnny also had Denny that he was looking after. He still has a life to live, whether this woman and his best friends left him or not. And yet, he took his own life immediately. Nobody just commits suicide without having a troubled past mentally. I'd argue that Johnny was probably a broken man before this movie ever started. The one thing he lived for was Lisa. He was probably depressed, and to him, Lisa was the only thing that could get him out of depression. But much like most people who deal with depression and try to find something or someone that can fill that void, they're never truly happy until they can be happy with themselves first. So Tommy Wiseau is not only deliberately delivering his lines in a strange way because of comedic intent, but I believe he's also delivering them in this way to portray a much more complex character than we see on the outside. And we can see this with multiple other characters. Lisa isn't just a woman who is cheating on her fiance, she's fallen out of love and fallen into lust with her fiance's best friend, which makes her deceitful. Her mother clearly has a broken past as well, since she wants her daughter to marry for money and not for love. Mark, Johnny's best friend, is not just there for Lisa, but he knows what he's doing is wrong, and he has this internal struggle between loyalty to his friend and the primal instincts of a man's lust. And Denny, who has a broken past as well, which makes him act weird? I, I don't know. I didn't really understand this character all that much. I mean, at the beginning of the movie, he claims that he wants to see Johnny and Lisa have sex and watch, like, watch them. And the, it, it was weird. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, there's these broken characters, and they're not acting in ways that are common sense because they are broken. This is a tragedy taking place. And just like a Shakespeare tragedy, where people act in ways that doesn't make any sense, it makes us not only think about these characters and what kind of broken past they have, but it also comes across pretty funny. I mean, when there are three guys in an alleyway tossing around a football at arm's length, that's comedic gold. 
It doesn't make any sense. So what other reason would we have it for being in the movie other than comedic intent? Plenty of comedies do things where they just don't make any sense. And for a regular romantic drama to do something that doesn't make any sense, there's never been anything as weird as this 16 second flower shop scene. Hi. Can I help you? Yeah, can I have a dozen red roses, please? Oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't know it was you. Here you go. That's me. How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, so here's the deal. The Room is one of the most incoherent movies on a scene-to-scene -scene basis. This story makes sense, but the way it tells it, it doesn't. In retrospective, I had fun watching The Room. It was dark, and it made me laugh. Therefore, it's a dark comedy. However, when you do rewatch scenes on YouTube out of context, it does look like a complete train wreck. And that's why I think The Room is in this weird little place between objectivity and subjectivity. It's simultaneously good and bad. It's a film paradox. If it was any worse, it would be completely unwatchable. And if it was any better, it would be completely forgotten. And that's why I think The Room is just perfect the way it is. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. Here on YouTube, it can be difficult to take things to the next level. When you've decided that you want to take video creation seriously, that's when it's time to either give up <laughs> because YouTube's really hard or buckle down and get yourself into a mentorship group. Here's where Awesome Creator Academy comes in. Sometimes you need a bit of help, structure, and accountability to be successful as a creator. The Awesome Creator Academy mentoring group gives you a place where you can get training, advice, and support when working on your projects, growing your brand, and building your business from people who are working just as hard as you are. I've personally been a part of the Awesome Creator Academy for a year now, and not only has it helped me be better focused and make more realistic goals, but it's put me in a place with other creative professionals that want to succeed just as much as I do. It's a place where I go to share my successes, my failures, and everything in between, and I highly recommend it. And with all that being said, if you check out the link in the description box below, you can become a member of the Awesome Creator Academy today, which will not only help you become a more successful creator, but it also makes sure that I'm able to eat this month, because let me tell you, when you're ready to take YouTube to the next level, you still have to eat. I know, it sucks. That's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you dislike the video, I'm gonna have to start telling everybody that you hit the dislike button. And then you're just gonna be walking around saying, I did not hit it, I did not hit it. Oh, hi viewer. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We'll be back tomorrow for another episode about The Flash, The Flash season three to be specific. So I'm excited, hopefully you guys are excited, and I'll see you then. Goodbye.